Hi, it's Katrina. From a lost kingdom to unlocking the secrets of an Aztec codex, here are 10 of the greatest archaeological mysteries. Number 10. Urartian Bronze Votive A few years ago, divers in Lake Van, Turkey discovered the remains of a 3,000-year-old castle hidden beneath the waters. While people knew there was some sort of structure under the water, there is much more than meets the eye. Parts of it date back to medieval times, while others date back to around 1000 BC, with carvings and inscriptions from the Urartu civilization. The Kingdom of Urartu, also known as the Kingdom of Van, developed during the Iron and Bronze Ages in what is now Armenia, eastern Turkey, and northwestern Iran. Dating back to the 9th century BC, the society only survived for a few hundred years, coming to an abrupt end during the 6th century BC. Its collapse and its history in general are largely a mystery to experts. Having pieced together what they can, historians have learned that the kingdom of Urartu was of great importance. Warfare and battle seem to be part of everyday life, but their artwork is also quite beautiful and elaborate. Urartu was made up of several smaller kingdoms that settled on fertile terrain. They kept written cuneiform records of military campaigns, urbanization plans, taxation systems, and waterwork and construction activities. The kingdom was situated along trade routes linking the ancient Mediterranean with Asian and Anatolian cultures. Urartu was defined by advanced architecture, including a canal that delivered fresh water to the area and was also known for its metalworking. Much of the culture's artwork is found in fragments. This Urartian bronze votive plaque, which dates back to sometime during the 8th or 7th century BC, depicts the storm god Teixeba sitting on a throne and wearing a crown with three thunderbolts in his left hand. He is surrounded by four worshippers, as well as a crescent moon, rayed sun, calf head, eyes, and a winged sun disk. Many people who look at Urartu art believe that they portray ancient aliens worshipping mysterious entities in the sky. Sometime between 640 and 590 BC, the Urartu kingdom mysteriously collapsed. Researchers believe that decades of frequent attacks by outsiders eager to capitalize on the society's wealth may have triggered its decline, and their enemies, either the Scythians or the Medes, took over. Number 9. Zheng Ha's Ghost Fleet During the early 15th century, the Chinese Yongle Emperor Zhu Di commissioned an admiral named Zheng Ha to sail to the ends of the earth with a fleet of nearly 300 vessels in a mission to create a world map. Zheng Ha led seven expeditions between 1401 and 1435, spreading Chinese culture as far as East Africa. Roughly one-fifth of Zheng Ha's vessels were so-called treasure ships, which were typically laden with gold at the beginning of the journey and returned to Asia with ivory, precious stones, porcelain, silk, and other valuable materials collected in his travels. According to legend, these wooden ships measured up to 417 feet long, although modern experts are skeptical of such huge measurements. Zheng Ha led an attack on the island of Ceylon, now known as Sri Lanka, sometime between 1410 and 1411, during which one of his massive treasure ships reportedly sank. But the vessel has never been officially found, despite numerous scientific surveys of the seafloor off the Sri Lankan coast. A research team claimed in 2017 that their search had produced positive results, but they did not elaborate on whether or not that meant they had identified the lost vessel. These things are usually kept a secret for a long time because they don't want anything to get stolen. They did, however, announce that they need to conduct further investigations. And now for number 8, but first want to give a big shout out to Fredericton Lightsaber Alliance and Darkosis for their nice comments. Thanks to all of our subscribers for sharing in our little corner of the internet. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us! Number 8. Prehistoric Orkney Skeleton A cattle farmer recently discovered a well-preserved skeleton possibly dating as far back as 4,000 years near Skara Bray, a Neolithic village located on mainland, the largest of Scotland's Orkney Islands. The remains were found in a 10-foot-wide stone burial cyst, or a coffin-like box, about a half mile away from the site. Thanks to how well built the vessel is, no animals have gotten into the grave, leaving even small bones like the toes intact. The size and scale of the cyst would suggest it is a late Neolithic or early Bronze Age burial, AOC archaeology director Martin Cook told the Scotsman. We think the skeleton is buried by itself and not part of a cemetery. Found lying in a crouched position on its right side, it's unclear whether the skeleton is male or female. Archaeologists are currently examining the bones and trying to determine if the individual was buried with any grave goods such as pottery, animal bones, or meat. 
It's unknown whether the grave is connected with Skara Bray, which was inhabited from 3180 BC to 2500 BC, but Cook said it could be a later grave. The discovery comes shortly after a possible Neolithic or Bronze Age settlement was found in the Bay of Scale, which is also about a half mile from Skara Bray. Included among the finds are the remnants of a damaged wall, deer antlers, a boar's tooth, a cattle jawbone, and a decorated stone. Archaeologists have tentatively dated the site to sometime between 4,000 and 5,000 years ago. Number 7. Mystery Mammoth A new study reveals that the oldest sequenced DNA belonged to a mammoth from a previously unknown lineage dating back roughly 1.2 million years. It's considerably older from the previous oldest known decoded genome, which belongs to a horse that lived in Canada's Yukon Territory around 780,000 years ago. The mammoth's remains were discovered in Siberia near the Krestovka River. Scientists studied and compared its DNA to the genetic material of a 700,000-year-old woolly mammoth and a woolly mammoth predecessor dating back to around 1 million years ago. In doing so, they learned that woolly mammoths interbred with the mystery mammoth roughly 420,000 years ago, creating the hybrid Columbian mammoth. Around a million and a half years ago, the newly identified Krestovka lineage crossed over the Bering land bridge that once connected Siberia and North America. Meanwhile, the woolly mammoth may have arrived as recently as 100,000 years ago. Researchers are unsure where the two species first crossed paths and mated. The Kristovka mammoth somewhat resembled the steppe mammoth, despite the two having diverged around 2 million years ago and evolving among two separate lineages for a good million or so years before procreating together an occurrence that Ross McPhee, a senior curator of vertebrate zoology at the American Museum of Natural History, described as mind-blowing. Researchers also discovered that woolly mammoths did not evolve certain traits to adapt to the cold as previously thought, including fat deposits, hair growth, and thermoregulation. These characteristics were already present in the creature's predecessor, meaning they evolved slowly and not in response to the need to adapt to changing circumstances. Number 6. Biblical Era Palace While excavating at the Armon Hanatsev Promenade in Jerusalem last year, archaeologists found three columns from a mysterious ancient royal palace. Along with numerous intricately carved limestone faces, the team unearthed the capitals, or the top parts of the columns, which date back to Israel's first temple period, which dates back between 900 and 586 BC. The medium-sized stone capitals were crafted in a significant first temple period architectural style called Proto-Aeolian, according to a statement from the Israel Antiquities Authority. Excavation director Yaakov Bilig believes that the structure may have been built between the reigns of the biblical kings Hezekiah and Josiah, possibly following the Assyrian siege of Jerusalem in 701 BC. Oddly, two of the columns were stacked atop one another. Bilig explained that it's unknown why someone chose to bury them in this manner and who is responsible for doing so. The rest of the building, which some speculate may have belonged to a prominent family or one of the kings of Judah, was likely destroyed around 586 BC during the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem, according to experts. In addition to the capitals, the team found lavish window frame parts. There is probably a lot to be learned from these magnificent remains. Number 5. Unidentified Shipwreck Around a decade ago, archaeologists learned of an unidentified shipwreck along North Carolina's Outer Banks, which appeared on the shoreline out of the blue amid a heavy surf. To this day, they are unsure of the identity of the wreck, which occasionally reappears along the coast, but tends to be reburied rather quickly, giving them little time to investigate. Whose ship was it? Experts believe it may be the Metropolis, a ship that sank in January 1878. By then, the vessel was already in bad shape, and despite this being a known fact, a Philadelphia company chartered it to transport workers and supplies to Brazil. While sailing south past the Chesapeake Bay, the ship's cargo was shifting badly, causing the hull's seams to leak. Then, the metropolis hit a sandbar of the Outer Banks, midway between two life-saving stations. Out of 245 passengers aboard, 85 died. Following the wreck, which occurred just two months after the wreck of the USS Huron, Congress authorized the construction of more life-saving stations and more funding for the U.S. Life-Saving Service, which afforded better training and resources. Nathan Henry, the assistant state archaeologist of North Carolina's Underwater Archaeology Branch, told the Outer Banks Voice that for now, the wreck's identity is speculative, but that it is located in the right place for possibly being the metropolis. It will take considerable time and resources to identify the ship, which will involve examining it against insurance records. 
Number 4. The Codex Cospi. The Codex Cospi, also known as the Nauen Divinatory Manuscript, is a rare Aztec book and one of the few surviving pre-Columbian manuscripts that were not destroyed through conquest or time. It is included in the Borgia group of manuscripts from central Mexico and is thought to come from the Puebla Tlaxcala region, but its exact origin is unknown. The Codex Cospi contains religious images, including depictions of the morning star Venus god Tlahuitzcalpantecutli, other deities, and priests dressed as gods and presenting offerings. Try to say that name three times fast. Tlahuitzcalpantecutli. Housed at the Bologna University Library, the Codex Cospi is currently undergoing a study of the tools and painting techniques that were used for making it. The pictorial manuscript was created sometime between the late 15th and early 16th centuries. Its images were made using vivid pigments, but it's unknown what they are made from. Using non-invasive techniques, scientists are trying to determine the composition of these colors as part of the current study. The level of detail these techniques are able to provide is unprecedented and will shed new light on the pictorial and technological practices developed by pre-Columbian artists, project head Davide Dominici told Fizz.org. The first non-invasive analysis of the Codex Cospi was in 2006, but technology has greatly advanced since then, and a fresh look at the manuscript will glean new insight into its creation. Few Aztec manuscripts survive into the present day, with most having been destroyed at the hands of Spanish conquerors and over time. The ancient society used books mainly for recording historical and religious information, and the loss of these texts means the loss of valuable insight into the culture. Consequently, scholars are especially dedicated to studying and understanding the surviving manuscripts. Number 3. Medieval Murder While excavating in preparation for a new tram line in Edinburgh last year, archaeologists discovered a 14th century graveyard containing the remains of some 350 people. One particular skeleton of a woman stood out as older than the rest and was discovered in a pit by itself in a crouching position. Based on this unusual positioning, experts believe she may have been murdered and then hastily buried. They are now working to determine the woman's origins, the nature of her injuries, and even what she looked like. In an interview with the Scotsman, City Council archaeologist John Lawson said, This discovery is really important because it was in a pit or a ditch about 10 meters wide and 4 meters deep, lying under the site of the original graveyard, which dates back to the early 14th century. We think it predates the graveyard, so it could be from a lot earlier than that. You would normally expect someone who had a Christian burial to be buried on their back, but she is completely out of kilter with everything else we have found. For the team, Lawson said the big question is why she has been dumped in a large pit or a ditch on her own. The researchers hope to determine through their forensic analysis whether the woman was murdered, as they suspect might be the case. It's a medieval murder mystery. Number 2. Skeleton Lake Situated 16,500 feet above sea level in the Indian Himalayas, Rupkan Lake is a glacial lake that is frozen for most of the year. Measuring roughly 130 feet across and about 10 feet deep, it's home to the scattered skeletal remains of several hundred individuals, which are visible at the lake's edge during the one month out of the year that the snow melts. Additionally, the site contains artifacts such as iron spearheads, leather slippers, wooden objects, and rings. Until recently, the human remains at Rupkund Lake were of entirely unknown origin. Reports of the bones date as far back as the 9th century, but the site was only rediscovered in 1942. Baffled researchers long speculated that the individuals all died in a single catastrophe that occurred at least 1,000 years ago, but new research that came out in 2019 tells an entirely different and infinitely more confusing story. Experts in India, the US, and Germany performed a DNA analysis on 38 different people's remains from the lake and identified 23 males and 15 females. As it turns out, the individuals died over a roughly 1,000-year span completely upending the theory that a single tragic event took their lives. Genetic information from 23 people who were dumped in the lake at different times between the 7th and 10th centuries revealed South Asian ancestry. The remains of 14 individuals of Eastern Mediterranean ancestry and one person of East Asian ancestry were discarded at the lake between the 17th and 20th centuries. Scientists are unable to determine thus far how the people at the site died, but it's unlikely they all died from the same cause, according to the lead study author. One group of people was most likely killed by a severe hailstorm, as many have markings of hard, round objects on their body and skull the size of baseballs. But what about everyone else? 
Even more baffling is the presence of Eastern Mediterranean skeletons, people who would not have been traveling the Hindu pilgrimage route that the lake sits along. Why they came so far is unknown. Like many archaeological mysteries, while the new study yielded some answers, it led to more questions than anything. Number 1. Strange Stone Structures Little is known about the history of Saudi Arabia's vast deserts, especially concerning pre-Islamic times, as archaeologists have just started exploring these regions in recent years. Last August, they announced the discovery of over 100 strange stone structures, some of which are older than the Egyptian pyramids. Using satellite images and Google Earth data, experts identified 104 mustatils, a previously unknown type of structure that they are working to learn more about in the Nefu Desert of northern Saudi Arabia. The study of mustatils featured in the Holocene described them as elongated rectangles measuring roughly 480 feet by 420 feet on average. These low, platformed structures were made from thousands of tons of stone and rock and were discovered near water resources. At least one of them dates back 7,000 years. The vast scale of these structures makes them among the most spectacular examples of prehistoric monumental architecture anywhere in the world, the study says. The researchers concluded that the mustatils may have been built amid climate change during Saudi Arabia's most recent green period, which lasted between 10,000 and 6,000 years ago and was marked by increased rainfall. Before this time, nomadic pastoralists struggled to survive in the harsh desert climate that defined the region. When the area transformed into grasslands, people might have settled down, marking the possible beginning of Arabia's Neolithic period. While experts believe that people built mustatils in response to climatic changes, they are unsure of the structure's purpose. Their walls are too low to be used for defensive purposes, and the team failed to detect any possible practical use for them, leading them to conclude that the structures had some sort of ritualistic or symbolic meaning. Thanks for watching! Which discovery did you enjoy the most? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it for more. See you next time! Bye!